Hello, my name's Tom, and welcome to part two of my modular walls tutorial. Today we're painting, so let's get into it. All my wall sections were undercoated with white acrylic gesso. I then mixed up a darkish grey with just a little brown. I wanted to add contrast to the cracked and damaged parts as underpainting, so that when I came to painting the wall colour, we'd get some nice layering. This also meant that I didn't need to be super careful and could slap it on there without worrying. My next step was to add some depth to the texture in the cracks and damage. For this, I mixed up a wash of water, acrylic matte medium, washing up liquid, and brown and black Liquitex inks. I added a BB as an agitator to help mix things up. This was then applied to all the damaged areas with a similar level of recklessness as the grey underpainting. Worth noting that this was well worth doing prior to painting the wall colour it would have been seriously time consuming to avoid the main wall colour. I then painted the main wall colour with some light grey brown, before painting all the bases with burnt sienna. I then moved on to an initial dry brush of burnt sienna mixed with white for all the bases. This would add a little more interest to them and define them a little better for the next dry brush. I used the same colours but with a lot more white and dry brushed this all over to tie everything together. That stage felt particularly tedious, but they were looking really good all together when it was done. Now, I could easily have stopped there and gone on to weathering, but I really love the look of Steve Famine's work, and I wanted to add graffiti. It was very time consuming and a little difficult to come up with loads of it on the fly, but I really enjoyed this bit. So much so that I forgot to record it. <laughs> Next up was the weathering. For this, I used the same brown black wash I'd mixed up before. This was applied in a somewhat realistic way, but a bit over the top too. In some cases, I painted in drips and damp areas, just using the tip of the brush. Another really nice method to mix in is to add a nice big blob of wash with one brush, then using an old split one to drag the wash downwards. You get a nice contrast between clean edge drips and older, more faded looking weathering. Looking back on it now, I think I should have used one of my finer tip brushes. Some of the drips look a bit too over the top and fat for the scale. Overall, it was a really long process to get all 14 of them done in batches, and at times it really, really dragged, but I'm super happy with the way they turned out, and there really was no better way of making it happen. So I'll leave you with the glamour shots. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you give these a go, please leave a comment to let me know how they came out. Also, if you happen to be watching this video and haven't seen part 1, make sure you check that out to see how I built them all.